last class we were discussing the soil moisture conditions and I had uh, mentioned that there are different soil moisture equilibrium points which are defined and those points we had defined in the form of field capacity, saturation level and the moisture wilting point. Today I'll start with the the soil moisture classification. The soil moisture which is available in the soil is available in the form of hygroscopic moisture, capillary moisture and gravitational moisture. This is only one broad classification which was given by Briggs as early as 1897. This classification has been improved upon by many other researchers. They have gone in for different subclassifications of the moisture which is retained in the soil. The basic form of moistures can be again further subdivided, but for our practical, all practical purposes, these three classes of moisture availability is the general moisture availability and the soil. Let's try to look at these classes one by one. What is hygroscopic moisture? What is capillary moisture and what is gravitational moisture? because this has its importance in knowing which part of the moisture is really useful to the, the crops and that is going to decide how much irrigation is needed. So this aspect of soil moisture uh, classification has a lot of importance in the area of irrigation water management. So you have to be very careful and understanding what are the various forms in which the moisture is available. Let's take a look at a soil particle. If this is the soil particle, this soil particle can have a layer of moisture which is very closely, this first layer of moisture, which is very closely um, struck to the, the soil particle. This layer is called the layer of adhesion. That is what is the moisture which is, which is clung to the soil particles with the adhesive forces. Okay. The next layer of moisture, this the broad layer of water is the water of cohesion. This layer is the layer which is formed around the soil particle because of the cohesive forces because of the, the molecular attraction of the, the water particles and this cohesion will keep on reducing as you go further from the soil particle. So this part is basically is the capillary water. This part which is stuck to the soil particles in the form of thin layers because of the cohesive forces is the capillary water which is available in the soil. And this part which is which is clinging to the soil particles because of the adhesive forces, what is 
it known as hygroscopic water. So this part is, uh, I can say that this is This is hygroscopic water. As we had discussed earlier also that both these, these layers, the thin layer which is, which is uh, the hygroscopic water as well as the capillary water, they are having different soil moisture tension and we had also discussed briefly that what do we mean by soil water tension. The soil water tension the soil water tension is the amount of force which has to be applied on the water molecules to extract them from the soil, from the pores. Okay. This can be the different units with which they can be measured. It can be measured in bars or can may be measured with uh, in atmospheres. One atmosphere is approximately equal to 10, 33 centimeters of water. So, the tension equivalent to 10, 33 centimeters of water. If we represent the tension which is prevalent on the soil particle or on the water because of the soil particle at the solid liquid interface which is just the thinnest possible layer of uh, water there will be approximately at a tension of around 10,000 atmospheres. So, you can realize, you can visualize that the water which is clinging to the soil particle at the the solid liquid interface in the form of the thinnest possible layer that can be at as much as 10,000 atmospheric tension. Whereas, if you look at this interface which is between the, the hygroscopic waters and the, the beginning of the capillary waters which is this interface. Here, the tension will be of the order of 31 atmosphere. Approximately, I mean, we are talking in terms of uh, just the average values, though it can also vary from soil to soil to a certain extent, but this is the average value which is, which is uh, applicable at this interface. So, you can, uh, you can visualize that the tension increases as we go closer to the soil particle and to extract the moisture which is closer to the soil particle, you will have to apply more force or the root system has to apply more and more force. Similarly, in this film also, in this layer, if you look at the variation, the variation can be from 
31 atmosphere to the outermost portion which is this part of the layer will be at one third of atmosphere. So again there is a variation, there is a gradient of atmospheric tension from uh, this part of the layer to the outermost part. Now in terms of the equilibrium points which we have uh, looked at or which we have defined in the last lecture, the equilibrium points in terms of wilting point, the field capacity and the saturation level. You can define those points here. This part, this interface which is between the capillary water and beyond the capillary water, any water which will be available on this side of the, the layer that can be drained out under the forces of gravity. So, anything on this side of the layer, anything which is on this side will be the gravitational water. So, all this water which is available, it might be able to have a thicker layer for a moment if more moisture is available, but that layer will reduce to this size of the layer after some time because of the natural drainage under the forces of gravity. So you can also say that this part on this side of the layer you have water which is known as gravitational water. Okay. So this level where you have one third atmospheric tension, this will be the field capacity level. That is what is the field capacity level. Whereas this level where you have a tension of 31 atmospheric will be called as permanent wilting point. And anything beyond this field capacity level will be, will be approaching the saturation stage. So when there are no pores occupied by water, the, the, the air, sorry, then that will be the saturation stage. So that is what in terms of with respect to uh, one soil particle, you can look at what it means. So there are many soil particles which are arranged in a soil and these are the capillaries. Now the amount of water which will be available within the soil will be a function of all these processes plus the size of the capillaries plus um, their arrangement, the way they are arranged. All those things are going to decide how the water is going to be available in the soil and that will in turn decide how it is going to be used or how much of that will be used. Let us look at the same thing in another manner. Now I have drawn instead of one soil particle, I have drawn a column of soil and in that column I am trying to differentiate or I am trying to uh, look at only the, the moisture content, only the moisture portion. This part it is still extending the amount of soil particles available that I am not going to concentrate. So if you look at only the, the moisture component and you express that in terms of percentage, this is again for a typical soil. These percentages are not fixed numbers. Then 
if we look at all these different classes of soil, this part of the soil which is between 0 percent to 10 percent will be or maybe less than 10 percent, I will say this part between this and this level, this is hygroscopic. moisture is the hygroscopic water. This part as we have seen that this is the one which is attached to the soil particles because of the adhesive forces and is not available to the crops for their production. Whereas this part as the capillary waters and this amount is termed as gravitational water. So looking at the proportions, you will find that in general, the gravitational water is the maximum. Those are the waters which can be removed from the soil by the forces of gravity. If you let the soil drain under the forces of gravity, it will drain out this surplus water which is the gravitational water out of the soil. So this is this is basically as far as the, the crop production is concerned, this water is superfluous. We can term this water as superfluous water, it is not of any use as far as the crop production is concerned because it cannot be retained in the soil. The gravitational water you will normally find uh, under the circumstances when you have a very heavy rain and because of that rain all the pore spaces have been filled up with the water. It has attained a state which is, which is the state of saturation. So saturation level will be somewhere here. This you can say that this is a saturation level. So this is the point where you will call the soil to be saturated and once all the water which is, which is surplus water or which can be drained out has been drained out which is quite a big quantity of water, then you will attain the next level which is the field capacity level. So this level will correspond to the field capacity level where all the moistures which is, which is superfluous has been drained out and the moisture which is available now is the one which is held because of the capillary forces and of course because of the hygroscopic uh, forces also. So this next level is the level where you will have uh, the, the wilting point, but that level is a level slightly within the capillary zone itself. This hole is the capillaries, capillary water, but a part of capillary water which is very close to the, the interface between the hygroscopic and the capillary that cannot be extracted by the root system. So the root system fails to extract any further water beyond a particular level in the capillary zone and that level is somewhere above this, this level of the hygroscopic water. That level is known as the 
the melting point. So these three moisture equilibrium points which we have defined earlier, these have this physical significance when you look at a, a soil column. Yesterday somebody was asking a question on uh, uh, these aspects. What was that question? Yes, you you want you wanted to know why the plants cannot use the water below the welting point. And uh, I had uh, told you that is is basically a, a tug of war between the root system and the soil particles. The root system can exert a force on the water to extract that moisture and if the force is more than what the, what is being exerted by the soil particles, then it can extract that moisture. But if the force is less than what the soil particles are exerting, then it cannot, it is not in a position to extract the moisture. So that is a function of the crop type. There are some crops which are, uh, uh, which have root systems, which are more forceful and they can extract more moisture, they can extract at a level which is much more than uh, another crop which is quite delicate or which is more sensitive crop. So a uh, wilting point from that angle, there was another question that uh, somebody wanted to know, is the wilting point a fixed thing or it varies with the crops? So from that angle it has to vary with the crop. A crop which is more rugged will have a wilting point which is lower than the wilting point of another crop which is more sensitive or which is more delicate. So when you come to the selection of the crops, later on we will we'll see that we will take that into consideration and uh, uh, from that angle the wilting point has a variable level for different crops. After this, let me show you the variation of uh, all these different moisture equilibrium points when we go from one soil to another soil. Now this is a, a depiction which is a plot between the water content expressed in centimeters per meter depth of soil versus different land, so different soils and the soils vary from sand, fine sand, sandy loam, fine sandy loam, loam, silt loam, light clay loam, clay loam and clay. So you can see that this part is the sandy soils or the coarse soils this is represented by the, the medium soils and the later portion is the clay soils which are fine soils or heavy soils. And the plot is, this is the field capacity. How the field capacity changes? As now we are looking at another aspect that within different soils, how these, what is the variation of these three equilibrium points? So far we have seen the three equilibrium points in generality, in terms of what do we understand by them. But now I am trying to de depict what is the variation between different soils when we consider, when we look at these equilibrium points, specifically the field capacity and the wilting point, because these are the two limits which define what is the available moisture content. So if you look at the field capacity, 
the field capacity level for sandy soils or for the, the light soils is very low in comparison to the, the soils which are heavy soils. That means if you look at the, the amount of water available at the field capacity level in these soils is much less. It increases with the, the uh, fact that as the soil becomes more and more clay or if the clay contents are more, it will have a tendency to have more absorption at the field capacity level. The amount of water available at the field capacity level in absolute terms is much higher. But does that mean that uh, the clay soils are more useful as far as the crop production is concerned? No, it's not necessary. We'll try to look at why it's not necessary. If you plot the wilting point, how the wilting point varies when we go from one soil to another soil, and if we look at the range of soils which are available in nature, you will find that this is the variation. This is the variation of the wilting point. It has a similar trend as of the field capacity. The field capacity also was having upward trend, whereas in the case of uh, wilting point, the shape is slightly different and that is what is very important aspect that is increasing of course when we go from the, the coarse soils to the fine soils. What does that what does that mean? It means that in the case of fine soils, though the amount of moisture which is available at the field capacity level is very high, at the same time the amount of moisture uh, at which the wilting point takes place or the wilting point occurs is also very high. So in other words you can say that though in the clay soils there will be a lot of moisture available in the soil, but still it would not be available to the crop. The crop would not be in a position to extract that moisture from the soil. Whereas in comparison in the case of light soils, you will have a low value of uh, moisture availability at the field capacity level and at the wilting point also takes place at a level which is very low. So in terms of the moisture availability, what is the moisture availability as far as the crop production is concerned? The available, I can say the available moisture content was that that is the difference between the two levels. So if I want to know what is the available moisture content at this point where I have a loamy soil, it will be nothing but, it will be the difference between the field capacity level and the wilting point level for that soil. So this difference is what is the available moisture content, which is the field capacity moisture content minus minus the moisture content at the wilting point. Now if you compare uh, for any other soil for 
example if we take this soil which is the sandy soil or if we take the clay soil in both these cases the moisture availability is much lower that is where the shape the convex and concave shape of these two curves they are beneficial at least uh, uh, to ensure that if the soil is of this type you will have more available moisture you are looking at this dotted line also what what does that signifies this dotted line which is this line this signifies that what is the time or what is the the level at which the irrigation is desirable because if you let this moisture content of the soil go below this level <coughs> this line then it is going to have a permanent effect on the the crop yield it will deteriorate the crop yield to some extent the more you go closer to the wilting point it will it will have more and more harmful effects on the yield the yield will be reduced so as far as the irrigation is concerned you must provide the irrigation you must supply the irrigation water much before the wilting point and that level also changes with the the soil type and this is the, the dotted line as the line which depicts the the desirability of irrigation in the soil any question you want to know whether uh, we can uh, interfere on in the soil and change the wilting point the wilting point uh, as we have uh, already discussed is not only a function of uh, the soil is also a function of the crop so you can uh, you can change the the wilting point by changing the the crop type if you know that your uh, that particular area is the the irrigation water is not assured you're not having any guarantee that you will get the water whenever it will be desired then in that case you might not be willing to take risk you might decide on some crop which is more rugged which can sustain the the deficit in the availability of moisture okay if you know that is not going to have any problem to get water whenever you desire then you can go in for crops which are more delicate which are uh, uh, which might be able to fetch you more money as a farmer you look at how much money you can get so there are some crops which are which are more uh, uh, useful crops from the point of view of getting money and you might go in for those crops but at the same time the, the those crops might be more delicate because in case you don't get the water they might you might lose them all together so from those angles uh, this is a management decision and that is what we are going to look at how precisely we should uh, decide on those aspects and later in the course we will come to those those points also where we will look at that what are the 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 characteristics of the crop what are the characteristics of the soil how we can put them together and how we can uh, match their uh, demands and we also look at the supply availability what is the surety of the supply availability 
and how much deficit can be expected. Knowing all those details, that is where we are going to look at uh, the management uh, tools, what can be done, what are the possible uh, options available with us. Now, this is another depiction of uh, the same thing, but uh, in terms of the soil moisture tension for different soils. The three soils which have been picked up, there is experimental data which has been uh, um, absorbed in the field and then plotted with respect to the moisture content and the soil moisture tension in birds. This top line with the crosses this is the, the one from silty clay loam. Let me. This is the silty clay loam, and the next one is the loamy soil. the silty loam and the third one is the sandy soil, the sandy loam. So in all the three cases the loam has been taken so that the variation is not very much. Within the loam you have one with the uh, higher sand contents one with having predominant uh, uh, silty contents and the one which is having the clay contents. Within those three, you can see here that again the same thing is depicted. You had seen that this is this level. Is which level? Is a saturation level where you have the soil moisture tension almost nil, negligible. So that level is the, the saturation level. Then after that you have the one third will be somewhere here, very close to that. That will be the somewhere here, it will be the field capacity level. It means immediately after the saturation level, you have uh, when the soil moisture tension goes to around one third, at, uh, one third bars because bars and atmospheres are quite close. Uh, the fence is very small. Uh, in the case of bar, I, it is uh, 1026 centimeters of uh, water tension. So from this point onward, when you reach here somewhere around uh, 15 atmosphere. That is a place when you are quite close to um, the, the wilting point because after this the wilting point will approach. So this level, you are uh, you are not waiting till you uh, approach the moisture tension beyond let's say somewhere uh, this level. This is the area which is important area. This is the area where you have to see that what is the moisture, moisture content available. So in these two soils, the soil which is clay loam and the sandy loam soil, in both these soils the availability is very small. Availability is the difference at this level and this, the, this level. Whereas in the case of silty loam, the availability is really appreciable. This part of the, the curve is so steep. This is the place where you have, if one third is somewhere here, so from here to here you have this much available soil, available uh, moisture. It's just a repetition of the same thing, but um, um, I wanted to show you the, the results of some experimental uh, data which has been plotted and 
it depicts the same uh, inference which we have made. Next, we'll start looking at. So far, we have been dealing with the characteristics of uh, soil and how it interacts with water. But the third component, when we started the topic of soil, water and plant relationships, so this is the third component which we should start looking at how the plants interact with the remaining two components. The first thing which will come to your mind is that what are the requirements of uh, a crop in terms of water? How much water crop requires? As that question has to be answered. If we want to use the water judiciously, we must know how much is the requirement of crop as far as uh, a specific crop is concerned. Does it change with the, the variety of the crop? So, if you look at the major factors which influence the water requirement of the crops, these are the three major factors. One is the crop and its variety. Which crop is in question? Because each crop will have its own requirement. Then the soil conditions. And the third factor is the climate. Now when we look at the crop and its variety, it's quite obvious that uh, When you have a small plant, its requirement will be different. If in comparison you are comparing with uh, a plant which is much bigger in size, it grows much bigger, it has more foliage, it has more leaf area. The requirements, because where the crop uh, uses water, it uses water for the building up of tissues. It uses water to get some uh, nutrients from the, the soil and that is where the water serves as a transporter. It is used as a medium to transport the, the nutrients and the salts from the soil to the plant for its uh, building up for its biological uh, activities. But in terms of the consumption, actual consumption of the moisture by the plant, which is only for building up the tissues, is very small, it's just a fraction. Most of this water, which is coming into the, the crop, is getting transpirated. It transpires, it goes from the, it travels through the, the root system into the crop and then leaves into the atmosphere through the, the leaves. And that process is known as the process of transpiration. So the, the crop variety will decide what is the amount of moisture which is required. There is one aspect. Then within the crop if you look at the total span, the total growth period of the crop, there is a time when you sow the seed, after this, the seed, uh, the seedling will be there and then it will start growing. The size of the plant will also change. A time will come when it, it will mature, though there are uh, in between processes also when there will be the fruit will be there, the fruit will uh, ripe and then the maturity of the crop depending on the type of crop you are considering. So this total period is known as the crop growth period. Within the crop growth period also you will find that the requirements, the water requirements 
changes. Those aspects will come to, uh, we'll, we'll uh, look at those aspects in detail later on. But right now, we can say that the crop and its variety is one of the factors, major factors, which will decide what is the, the crop water requirement. The soil conditions, uh, just now we have looked at uh, the various soil conditions and we have also mentioned that when the soil is at the field capacity, the soil moisture tension is the minimum. As you go from the field capacity level more towards the, the wilting point, the soil moisture tension is going to increase. So that is the reason that the water requirement of the crop will be influenced with respect to the soil condition. The requirement, of course, uh, the requirement of the crop will be there, but how much it will be consuming will be a function of what is the soil condition. So there is an optimum requirement, there is a requirement which is constrained requirement with respect to the soil condition. That is what is the difference, that is what is uh, we are trying to bring out. Then thirdly, the climate is a major factor in terms of deciding what will be the water requirement because of the fact that it is the climate which will decide what is the amount of evapotranspiration. Okay. We just mentioned that transpiration, what the transpiration is. The other active process which is uh, responsible for the loss of moisture from the soil is evaporation. So, if we if we want to know what is the water requirement, we express the water requirement of the crop in terms of consumptive use. So, consumptive use is a is the term which is used to express the, the water requirement of crop for its production, the total water requirement of the, the crop for its production is what we term as consumptive use. And it will be composed of, as we have just mentioned that the amount of water which is transpired by the leaves, there is one component of the consumptive use requirement of the crop. The second component is the amount of water which is used for building up of the tissues. So that is the real requirement uh, as far as the crop, crop uh, uh, is concerned in terms of is building up the growth of the plant, but even transpiration is also an essential uh, component. Though the amount of water which is transpired is much higher in terms of uh, the quantity when we compare it with the amount which is used for building up the tissues. And the third component which is uh, uh, responsible for making up the column to use as the evaporation from the wet soil. So that is also one of one of the the constant of the consumptive use, though it might not be directly responsible for the crop production, but as far as the requirement is concerned, the total requirement which is uh, uh, to be looked at when you look at the irrigation requirement, this part has to be included. Okay. I think we'll uh, stop.
stop here for today. Any question if I want to, um, I, can, uh, I can answer any question if you have.